Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Tom and today I'm going to share with you some Roll20 tips for token macros and how that can really speed up combat. All right, let's get started. So tip number one, use token macros. These are the macros that when you click on a token appear across the top of the screen. They are unique to their each individual token or actually the character that token represents and they are a very handy way to make combat go lightning fast. Tip number two, let's get through some tips that go through navigating around your token. So tip number two is shift plus double clicking a token opens that token's character up on the bio and info tab. Tip number three, alt plus double clicking on a token opens, opens the token up on the character attributes and abilities tab. And abilities are those token macros. And as long as they're checked, they appear in the screen on the top of the screen. If the left button showing macro bar is checked, they appear on the bottom of the screen. That's not what we want, so we'll go over that in just a little bit. All right, tip number four. If you have a token selected and you shift and click on one of the macros of the token, it opens the character up right on that macro. Tip number five. Use the power cards API. So I don't use very many APIs, but the power cards one really makes the actions look nice in the chat window here over on the right. So if I click on this token, I click on some ability scores, I get these really nice entries in the chat window. Tip number six, there are alternatives to the API. You can do kind of the same thing with just the built-in tools. So I have this character set up using only the built-in tools, and I'll do a strength and a dex and a con for that character. So I can do the same thing where I roll 2d20s, I add modifiers, I add notes, etc. Kind of similar. Alright, let's go through in tip number seven how to create a macro. So we'll do the initiative macro for this token and we'll do it, this token doesn't use API so we're doing it without the API. So let's click on the token, let's shift and click on the macro we're going to modify and here we are. Now if I want to create a whole new token macro, I would click this add button by abilities. That will create a blank ability. I'm going to use this icon to drag it up into position above my initiatives. I'm going to check show as token action so it will appear in the bar up here. And then I'm going to modify it using the pencil icon here. Now this box here is what appears in the token macros. So I use some Shorthand, uh, put some reference information here. So initiative plus 3, speed of 30, pass perception of 14. There we go. And then I'm going to use the emote tool to make these dividing lines. So emote and dash and then say just A for the token name. Let's test it and see if it's working. Yep, that works. So now to grab the token name, I'm going to do at open curly brackets selected pipe token underscore name close curly brackets and test that out yep that's working good then uh, I can go down a line and I can make bold text by double asterisks and we'll test that out yep working good then go down another line and I'm going to show the rule I'm making this will just print that text out it won't actually roll a d20 for me but that's working now to roll a d20, I can use double closed brackets, I mean double square brackets, and that will roll a d20, and I can do math in there, that will roll a d20 and add 3. There we go. Ah, roll a 20. Now if I want to add this roll to my initiative tracker, I can just right here in the side of the, the box, add and curly bracket tracker, curly bracket, and try that out. Boom, so it rolled and added it to the tracker. And if you roll over and over, it just replaces the number in the tracker with your new roll. All right, so now if I wanted to, instead of using this static number plus three, I wanted to go and look at the attributes over here and grab the three that's in the initiative attribute, then I would do this. I'd go here, I'd do a parentheses at curly bracket selected pipe INIT curly bracket. There we go, that'd do that. And then if I want to use a tiebreaker, I'm going to do the exact same thing again, but divide by 100. That, and I'm going to go here, divided by 100. Let's test that out. 
There we go. So it rolls, does the tiebreaker, puts it in there. So you can use a tiebreaker. I use initiative. You could instead use dex, the straight dex number, divided by 100. That's the default in the uh, shape character sheets that Roll20 uses. That's it. That's initiative. All done. I'm going to delete this old one. Confirm that, yeah, I want to delete it. I'm going to close this. And close that. Click off my guy, back on my guy. Here's that initiative button for him. So you can make all these buttons that way. Um, here's the initiative button, what it looks like in the API. Oops, I did Bastard's initiative. Uh, different. Uh, oh, the API, I don't have anything. It just rolls the initiative. There we go. Okay. Um, tip number eight. Let's create an ability score macro. Baca's got uh, quite a bit of stuff going on because Baca is a ranger. So let's look at Baca's wisdom ability score. Quite a bit going on there. I will shift click on it, opening that up, and then I will create a new one and make it so it shows up in the token bar on top. Drag it up here into position, and I'm going to just kind of overwrite the old one or copy and paste from the old one. So, Wisdom 16. Again, that's just so I can quickly see that when I click the token, what his ability scores are. And then Power Cards, they have this exclamation point power in the front. And then uh, each of the lines comes with a um, double dash and then whatever text you want to use. There's some reserved text, and name is one of them. This puts the name at the top of the, the, uh, the top of the printout in the chat log. So here you'll recognize this selected again, and token name. That is, should be enough to actually print the name as test it. There we go. So it just prints the name. Then for the first line, I'm going to make a wisdom check. So dash dash, wisdom check, um, and then d20 is wisdom 16, so he'll be plus 3. Let's try it. Yeah, there's a wisdom check. It rolled a d20 and added 3. Now, we want to replace this 3 with the modifier. So the syntax for that is plus floor, parentheses, at curly bracket whiz, curly bracket divided by 2, minus 5, closing parentheses. So what this is doing is grabbing his wisdom score, which is a 16, placing it here, dividing by 2, that gives us 8, subtracting 5 from 8 gives us 3, so there's plus 3. Let's try that. And it'll be built in, we won't see it, but if we hover over it, we'll see it rolled a d20 over for 15, and then that calculation on the floor for 3 more for 18. All right, that's working good. And then if we want to roll twice, because we want to cover if there is advantage or disadvantage, we just do that. Test that out. Working good. Now we can add some lines, for example, if he has modifiers in addition to his basic ability score modifier. And Baca does. He has his proficiency modifier. Actually, he doesn't have a proficiency modifier, but he has a magic item that gives him a bonus for saving throws. So this is going to do add, and this colon 3 is because I'm going to have add multiple times and I kind of have to give it a slightly different name every time for it to print them multiple times. Otherwise it prints the most recent one that I have there. Let's test that. Boom, working good. Now I have another add I just have to have some different number. And it's going to add his proficiency modifier from over here, plus 3, or twice his proficiency modifier if it's related to a forest. There we go, that's done. So that is building a ability score uh, macro. That's all done. All right, tip number nine. Let's build an attack macro. We're going to use ba Baca again for this one. If we look at how you do it without um, an API, it would look like that. With the API, it could look like this. So let's do Baca's. Baca's got a flaming longsword. If I look under his magic items, it's a flame tongue. So he's going to do an extra 2d6 fire damage. I'll show you how I build that in. So here's his longsword. I'm going to create a new one. Kind of just go step by step through it. Check that so it'll show on the tokens. Come up here and expand this. 
call it longsword. And you can see if I have like range, I would build that into the title so it's visible just by clicking on the token. I can look up the range without going any further than that. All right, so power card call, name call, again the uh, selected token name, and then a next line down can be in bold longsword. And then I'm going to have it just roll d20 plus his attack modifier of 7. That's an attack roll with it. Let me check that. Great, that worked good. Then the next line down is going to be if he hits. And the damage of the longsword is d8 plus 6. And then I can roll it. I'm just showing it there for reference. And then I roll it uh, like that. Check that off and roll it. Okay, so an attack roll and a hit roll for damage. Now, I'm going to add a second attack number because sometimes you have advantage or disadvantage. I'm going to separate him with a pipe symbol. Then I'm going to add his um, possibility of getting a crit. So if he gets a crit, it'll be another d8 damage. Let's try that out. And his he's plus 6 to damage because he's got, uh, I think, dueling fighting style. All right, that's all there. Now, he's got a flame tongue. So flame tongue could do an extra 2d6 fire. I could add that as a, another line where it says um, flame tongue, add 2d6, 2d6. Fire. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty nice. But what I like to do is I like to just roll this into the main damage because I can back it out when I need to. And it's more often than I need to add them together than I need to back it out. So to minimize the math, I'm going to put it all together. And I do that by adding plus 2d6 here, then adding plus 2d6 to each of these for the regular damage and if he gets a crit. Okay, and then I uh, didn't do this, but I normally will append what kind of damage it is. And if it's magical, I'll put it M for magical. So magical slashing. And then when I add the fire, I'll do slash fire. And that'll be it. So let's test that out. There we go. Got the slashing and fire all together. Now, if he was attacking someone with this attack that was immune to fire, I could back out the fire damage by hovering over here and seeing that he rolled 12 for fire damage. So he actually did only 7 magical slashing damage to a creature immune to fire. And again, that's less common than when I have to add them together, so I like to normally do it like that. All right, that is it. Done. Close out that. Yes, delete. He's ready to go. I click on him. Click on longsword. Click on longsword. Two-handed. Short sword. Javelin. Just that fast to make attacks. And to see all his attacks, and to see the ranges of attacks, etc. All right. Uh, tip number 10, creating a spell macro. Let's do, for that, uh, Basser. So we'll do a Sacred Flame on Basser. I'm going to click on the token, shift click on the macro. I'm going to go up to the top here, add a macro. And I'm showing how to do this manually, one at a time, but I normally do it kind of in a batch mode where I do all this in a text file or a word file and I read it all in for a character. And I have another video that shows how to do that. I'll put a link to that or it'll be in the, yeah, I'll put a link to that in the description. So you can see how I do in detail a character in Word and then roll it, import it all at one time. Okay, so Sacred Flame. So I will normally put the spell's name, kind of shortened, and then the level of the spell. If it was concentration, I'd put a C. If it was heightenable, I'd put an H. And then range of the spell. And I'd use T for touch, S for self. And then if the spell happened to be a bonus action to cast, I'd put the action it is. Or if it took a minute to cast, I'd put a minute etc. Okay, and then in the field here I got power again for power card. I got the common name uh, thing that I use right there. And then I have the spell. So, the spell, I can put in the full name of the spell. Sacred Flame. And I'll repeat the range and all that stuff. And then a pipe. And then I put, it's an evocation, it's verbal and semantic. It's a creature you see, all important keywords there. It ignores cover. 
it does for this level character 2d8 damage and then 2d8 rolled and then radiant and then there's a saving throw to avoid the damage so I have 8 plus looking up um, their spell modifier uh, which is their proficiency um, plus their ability score modifier and it starts from 8 and then closing bracket double closing square bracket deck save negates there we go sacred flame in shorthand everything you need to not have to ever look it up evocation of verbal somatic creature you see ignore its cover there's the damage it's radiant there's a deck save to negate that's it that is a spell macro close that out so combat can go just super fast and you can put in all the notes you need to run the spells and not have to look anything up that's what makes this so fast you have um, just from a glance everything you need to know about a character showing their uh, their armor class their hit points their ability scores um, I can click on what gear he has I can uh, if he's got some special type of gear actually he's got a pearl of power I can click on that and see what that does all right at your fingertips and that's just what makes combat go so blazing fast with these token actions um, it is more effort most definitely to do than the character sheets but I find it uh, completely worth it in game and again you can do it with APIs and without APIs same same stuff all right one more tip uh, bonus tip here creating reference macros so those are the token macros that go to the top of the screen these macros at the bottom can be very handy for providing reference information to the players in game or the or you the DM in game if you're the DM um, if there's mount combat and you want to remember what oh what happens if the mount goes down got that just right at your fingertips uh, mount knocked prone reaction to land on the feet otherwise dismounted plus prone in five feet so how do you make these macros they live over here under collection here's a list of macros and you can create them in or the bar or not in the bar so let me create a new one and they can be the same as character tokens where they don't use API stuff or they do use API stuff so let's just do a test one and we'll just say hello world so all this is going to do is print that text to the chat window now if I click this it's going to show up in every single token I don't want to do that I'm just going to save it I look back here in the collection I'll find it in alphabetical order here's test I already did one too I'm gonna click in bar and there it appears in the bar that's, so that's how you make those all right that's it that's uh, some tips for creating token macros which make combat really engaging really fast uh, really fun and uh, I will see you next time for some more tips thanks for watching